Hey folks, Captain Dave here. Up in the boat. It is and has been one absolute miserable weekend. So I'm going fishing tomorrow because tomorrow is Monday. There's nothing like a Monday at 7 a.m. when everybody goes to work. And it doesn't matter because this weekend has been absolute crap. High winds, rain, cold, warm, blowing, gale force winds, you name it. We've had it, I think, starting on, I think it started on Friday and today is Sunday. What I wanted to do is take a minute here to answer some questions. I get a lot of questions and, you know, I try to answer them. So if you ask a question on the on a video, and it usually has nothing to do with the video. People ask questions all the time. It has nothing to do with the video. But I've tried to compile some of the questions here, and I'm going to answer them. So I'm going to call this Jenny Wolf Q&A. I'm up in the boat right now, underneath my boat port, and um, some of the questions are kind of kind of funny. I think um, I had one guy, uh, one uh, subscriber, <laughs> and I mean this is I'm, I'm just I'm making light of it just because it seems that way to me. He asked, I guess after his. 50th video that he's watched, he said, is that boat aluminum? Well, of course it is. The Jetty Wolf is a 26 foot, what we refer to in the business is a plate alloy boat. It is built out of super thick, you know, quarter inch, three six three sixteenths inch aluminum plate. Okay, heavy-duty aluminum plates, all welded. Um, it has some gray anti-skid deck painting, okay, for uh, so it's an anti-skid. So, yes, my boat's aluminum. I love aluminum. And then there's the other question of what kind is it? Well... This particular boat is what I jokingly refer to as the Southern Edition of a Pacific Center console made by Pacific Boats in Marysville, Washington. People go, Washington? Yeah, Washington State, not Washington, D.C. I get that all the time. I say Washington and people go, Washington State? Yeah, I don't think they're building aluminum boats in Washington, D.C. They're doing a bunch of other stupid shit there. But the next thing is people ask me all the time, Gee, how much does that boat cost? Well, I, um, with you know prices of aluminum and prices of labor, because these boats aren't built by just a bunch of non-skilled laborers like they do many times in the fiberglass boat building business um, this boat is all built by fabricators and welders that from what I understand if they're not building boats up there in Washington they're working for aircraft manufacturers McDonnell Douglas or something up there I don't I don't know so if you're a really good aluminum welder and a fabricator and you know how to build things then um, you got a job I guess so but to answer the question how much does your boat cost well to give you an idea because I do not know how much this boat costs right now I have not a clue but take your most high-end fiberglass boat with every bell and whistle you can think of on it. 
And to name a few, I'd say uh, Everglades and um, maybe Contenders or Yellow Fins and let's see, what else is completely over the top? You know, those uh, Boston Whaler, you know, vibrated, heated seats on a boat, you know, all that. You take your really super high-end fiberglass boats. That's what an aluminum boat usually ends up costing. Because each one of these is built one at a time, okay? And um, the difference is you're buying a boat for life. When you buy an aluminum boat like this, not a tinny, there's other boats that we refer to as tinnies in the bit in the boat in the aluminum boat world, which would be your your Grumman or your uh, Luma Crafts or any of those other ones that are riveted together, and <clears throat> the aluminum is real thin and they're real lightweight boats, you know, for lakes and things like that. This boat is still extremely light at maybe 3,000 pounds for a 26-foot boat. But I don't have anything really in it. If you went to PacificBoats.com, you'd go to the website of the people who built my boat. And you can see they build them with full-blown cabins. They build commercial boats. They work boats. And uh, there's a bunch of companies in the Pacific Northwest uh, British Columbia, Canada, everybody always thinks, you know, myself, I've gotten comments at the dock by people who, I guess, don't see me out there because they're not out there, but I'm out there all the time, that think I moved from Alaska or something to Jacksonville. I've seen a boat just like that in Alaska. Well, no, you probably seen one with a full-blown cabin with a damn diesel heater inside of it. Now... No, there's several of us, several, who have open center console aluminum boats built by Pacific in the state of Florida. And there's even guys that had a couple uh, cabin -y, cabin walk-in cabin or whatever kind of boats in the state of Florida. So, okay, that's boat, boat cost. So, boat cost, a lifetime boat for what you get in a high-end fiberglass boat with every bell and whistle and seat warmer and vibrator and cup holder. The difference is, me personally, I'm a kind of guy that I believe in, I truly believe in less is more. I want utilitarian, I want to work for a living. I don't need all that crap that's going to break. Can you imagine how long a heated seat on a boat that gets, you know, used a lot is going to last? I don't know. Um, I get asked all the time about my floats on my float rigs. One guy said, are your floats Bow Max? Well, that's a... A salmon type float, Bomac, they make theirs. Um, it's kind of a foam float. Yes, I've used some Bomax, but to answer your question, no, my floats aren't all Bomax. They're another brand from the Pacific Northwest. Better than Bomac. I know what a Bomac float looks like. Uh, I get asked, I got asked by one fella. What are those grips or something on your rod? On the end, on your hand, on the grip, on the handle of your rods. All it is is tennis, tennis uh, racket handle wrap. And I usually put wrap around some of my rods for the sheer fact that in uh, the warmer months, I get these people that take a bottle of sunscreen and they dump it over their head and they're just sunscreened to death and then they're putting their hands all over my tackle. 
Well, it turns out that even you do them slimy hands on even an EVA foam grip, that stuff's real oily and it doesn't want to come out. And it actually makes the grip a little slippery. So I add that. I add the tennis racket uh, wrap around my grips. And many times I do it on cork handled rods because I just want to keep the cork looking decent because I hate cork. Okay, I, d I don't like cork, period. Uh, let's see, what is the next thing I get asked about? The Just Grab It glove. Here's the Just Grab It glove. You see me wearing this all the time. This is one of my major, if you're going to say sponsor, then this is a sponsor. Okay. Um, the Just Grab It glove is probably the best invention since... I would say since the ugly stick. Okay. People either get this or they don't get it. Okay. And there's tons out there who don't get it. Uh, you see me wearing it. And here it is. It's around my waist, right? Let's say. You put your hand in here. And it comes off. You grab the fish got velcro there's the glove that's what the glove looks like covered in stuff that would normally be on your hands then you hit it to the velcro and you pull your hand out okay so when I put this on there it is you see me I grab a fish Take the fish off the hook with my pliers. They go onto this retractor right here that's on the belt. So they just hang there. Okay, I do not fish without my Just Grab It glove. And I always tell people on my boat that if I don't have this Just Grab It glove on, I feel like I'm missing something. It's got this little pad kind of protects your shorts. I stick it there and I pull my hand out. These are for sale in Jacksonville, Florida at Academy Sports and Outdoors. I walk through Academy sometimes once a week. Shits and giggles. I go in there, I'm looking for something and they never have it. But, but that's the Just Grab It glove. And I walk through there <coughs> to see if anybody pays attention to this. This is like the Tim the, Tim the Tool Man Taylor work belt. This is like a, a carpenter putting on his tool belt. This would be my, my tools. Now another guy said to me, where did you get those pliers? Well, all these are this goes on there like that. So you got these little grippers that go on to the uh, little retractor. This is just an old pair of X tools. Remember that company, X tools? They're plastic pliers and they had just metal inside of them here. That's the reason I like these. And they're kind of long handled. Okay. And they floated. And then I think X tools was bought out or something by. Berkeley or wherever they're one of those corporate gobbling You know maneuvers that this company faded away and now you see plastic pliers built by uh, Somebody else and Mustad and Berkeley and everything. That's all these are any corrosive plastic pliers because here's what comes Here's a newer just grab it glove brand new and how, what you do with the Just Grab It glove, just to give you a little information, is you buy this either right-handed, right-handed, left-handed, or the glove comes in small, medium, and large. 
I'm always right-handed. So I put it on. So the glove is over here on this side. And then I got my pliers. Well, this is the pliers that it comes with. Is they're just metal pliers. You know, for the freshwater guys. Um, they grip on here. And what I do is I use the metal pliers until they're just so wore out and rusty or whatever. That um, then I replace them with the X-Tools pliers. Or plastic pliers of some sort. And see, this goes right on here like this. You just hit it, shake your hand out. I don't understand. I mean, the, the maker, the owner of this, John, out in Louisiana, he'll go to trade shows or whatever. I mean, he's done it all, okay? This is a sort of a lifelong project for him, the Just Grab It glove. And... He, he has people that just don't get it. They want to grab that, that stinky-ass fish rag, okay? They want it to blow out of the boat. They want it to, where's the fish rag? They always want to be grabbing that fish rag. Guess what? Just grab it, glove. Fish rag? Who gives a crap about the fish rag? You got your pliers right there. Then, another thing is, is the reason it was... The concept of this even came around is because over in Louisiana, they catch m more trout than anybody knows what to do with over there. Okay, speckled trout. Speckled trout are extremely slimy. They're catching them like, pff, like crazy. Okay, I mean, their limit is 12 inches at 25 per person. Okay, pretty much three quarters of the state. There is a portion of the state that has a lower limit from what I, where it used to have a lower limit. I don't know if they changed it. But all around Lake Pontchartrain and southeastern Louisiana, 12 inches at 25 per person. So you're grabbing a lot of trout. Well, I actually took this to a retailer in Jacksonville, Florida that I will not mention who, but it has a store here. And gave them one. And this was before Academy was even here in Jacksonville, which John has Academy as his one of his big time distributors. Okay. John from Just Grab It Glove. And I took this there and I showed it to him. And he goes, Ah, uh, yeah, there used to be some kind of there's big gloves like that before. There can be gloves like this before. There was boats like this before. There was trucks like that before. There was cars like that before. But now this is the deal, right? And I said, you ought to get on this. Get on this because you get people like myself and friends of mine who I've turned on to this. Um... Once you use it, you feel naked without it. It's so handy. I use this. You'll see me when I'm cleaning fish. I grab the fish. Like this. It's not that it's puncture resistant or anything. It's just a better way of grabbing the fish. Right? Well, I said to this individual, well, you ought to carry these. And, you know, it was invented basically by a guy named John over in Louisiana. They catch more trout and everything. And the comment that I got in return was, do we catch enough fish over here to warrant something like that? Well, maybe not. Maybe. Maybe not. It's not. That's not the point. Okay. The point is, you stop grabbing that damn, looking for that stupid, nasty fish rag. I got them. I got them because I, I got to have them for my customers and everything. And even... If I have a one person, you know, and I remember, I give them one of my Just Grab It gloves to wear. So that's, that's that. Okay. Um, I guess I get asked a lot about how to. How do you tie a stopper knot? Uh, 
How do you set up a float rig? That's probably one of my number ones. I have an entire how-to playlist on my YouTube channel, everybody. I got, you know, bull reds, shark fishing, taking little kids fishing, the river, inlet, jetties, just my everyday fishing inshore, offshore, just sharks, how-to. Jetty Wolf moments, just the things I want to share with you. So there's a how-to section there. And there's a lot of that in there. Maybe, I don't know exactly what is in there, but I tried to cover all the bases as far as float rig fishing is concerned. Uh, let's see. Another one. What do you do? How, what, what camera are you using for your videos? Well, right now I'm using the Mobius. And I've got plenty of videos about the Mobius. The smallest, <laughs> the greatest little cameras in the, that I've ever seen. I've got two Mobius. And I do a lot of my videos with Hero 2s. GoPro Hero 2s. I don't believe in jumping to a 3, a 3 plus, a 4, a 4 black, or nothing. I do just fine with Hero 2s. In my personal opinion, they're the best all-around GoPro ever made. Easy to operate. They do good 1080p. They, they, they do everything just fine. Okay? Just fine. I mean, you're loading most of these videos up to YouTube. I'm not making a damn... I'm not making a movie. So that's just to answer some questions that people have tossed over, you know, over to me in the last year or so. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate. Put it in the comments below. You can email me. My website is on, in the description of the video on every single video. You can click on the website and you can email me off my website. Um... If you're a G Plus member, I'm on G Plus. I'm on Facebook. I'll put all that stuff below here. Ask a question. I'm here to help you. You know, there's a lot and a lot, a lot of goofy shit on YouTube. Goofy fishing shit. Goofy cats. Goofy car wrecks. Goofy r Russian dash cam. I'm not, I'm not into all the goofy stuff. Basically, I'm into helping you if I can and educating. My entire YouTube channel is basically to educate a possible customer if they want to go fishing with me. And the YouTube channel is basically to show you what I do. So if there's something you don't understand, whoever, put it in the comments below. If you don't want to do that, you just want to ask me something, you know, that's not in the open public, you can email me. And you can always find a little blurb in the, in the uh, video description of what the video is about. My website's in there. Any links? I always put links and stuff in there. When I did the Mobius um, how-tos about how to operate and how to... Use the Mobius camera, the action camera. I always put the Mobius website down in there and stuff like that. Coming up this week, you're going to be able to get from my channel a coupon code for Rugged Shark Shoes. I'm going to give you a coupon code to go to their website to get... A percentage off on non-sale items. If they have a sale, well, that's the sale. But it's going to be, if you've never heard of Rugged Shark Shoes, uh, they do a lot of boat shoes, um, some sneakers, some slip-on shoes, uh, and I'll be doing some video about rugged shark shoes but come anything after March 1st because that's when it starts here 
I'm going to be able to give you the coupon code. And as a matter of fact, I don't even know what today's date is. Today's March 1st. I didn't even know it. So I am going to put the coupon code in the video description so you can go check out Rugged Shark boat shoes and stuff like that. And if you're in the market, you'll be able to get a percentage off. So there you go. That was worth watching this video to start off with. A coupon code. I love coupon codes. I search the web sometimes for coupon codes. So if I'm purchasing something, I can get free shipping or something like that. You know, as I always say, I can't buy anything MSRP. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a deal watcher, looker, constantly looking for a deal. So thanks for watching. Look below for more information. Ask a question. And don't forget, check out Rugged Shark and the coupon code that I'm going to be putting below. Tomorrow, I'll be out fishing, see what we can come up with, and uh, get back into fishing. I'd rather do fishing than this type of stuff. Well, now I'm heading over to the bait shop. I really, really, really want to make sure that they've got shrimp for tomorrow. I'm taking a guy who knows all about flow rig fishing, but doesn't know exactly how we do it here. And I need to show him. That's the whole idea of the trip. So, crossing the fingers, we're going to be able to get about eight dozen tomorrow. Boy, am I happy. I just, I just ran into the guy that I'm taking tomorrow at the bait shop. And he's doing all that sheep's head fishing. And they got shrimp. So, that means I get to concentrate on sheep's head fishing instead of I mean, trout fishing and float rig fishing instead of sheep's head fishing. Because he's doing it all on his own. Good, good. I like him having them shrimp. Live shrimp. <laughs> Gotta love them. Everything from a flounder to a sheep's head to a bird to a a tarpon to a Spanish mackerel to a cobia float rig and a live shrimp catches it all <laughs> 